The next, the next slide, and this is a really important slide. This is something I hope you guys think about. This is Roberts, and I, I love this. This is what he went off and created after we stopped collaborating um, a little bit here. And he went off and did this, and you know, he saw me short, he, shortly after I moved back to Connecticut and shared this with me, and it, it's really helped me. And what he does is he breaks up trust in the positive and negative trust. And he's created what he calls the trust belt. And at the center of the trust belt is the concept of a transaction. Think about that. When I go to the store, what do I do? Here's the money. Give me the soda. See you later. It's a neutral trust, right? You don't really do anything. There's no trust involved. You buy it, they give it to you. As you kind of move up into the concept of relationship, this is when listening starts. I start to hear what you're saying. I start to give respect to what you say. Next level up is a guardianship, which is going to be about protect me, protecting someone from harm. Okay? A companionship is it's a mutually beneficial relationship. So I always like think about a companionship. It's like when two 80-year-old people get married at the end of their life, you're kind of like, why do they bother to do that? Well, because they're there for each other to provide companionship and, and help each other as they need to. It may be about love. It may not be. But it may just be about the ability to be together and help each other. Um, friendship is interesting because this is when you begin to open up. This is when you begin to share your personal side. Okay, this is when you uh, give of yourself and, and give the personal part of you to people. And then there's a partnership, and this is in business where, you know, we all talk about this, one plus one equals three. We have synergy, business synergy in what we do. But the last step is what he calls a creationship, and it kind of takes all, and I love that word, and I, I'll, I always remember the moment he told me, like, like, he made up this word, and it just makes perfect sense, especially to innovation people, creationship. It's that spark you have when you meet somebody you've never met before, and just everything seems to work. You feel open, you feel collaborative. To me, that's when two people have very similar ways of doing things, and they just really feel in general comfortable with each other, both personally and professionally. It's a very powerful place, and it can only come when you have total trust with, with people and trust that they're going to do the right thing. The negative I won't even go into, but you can read it. But what's really neat about this is this belt has dimensionalized the concept of trust. You can point to a part of it when you're in a, in a situation. And you can look at your own organization and start to figure out where do we play as a company, where do I play as an individual, how is the interaction between these two people, between these two groups. And if you think about it, you start to, wow, you know, I kind of have a way to talk about trust. It's not so fuzzy. Now, you could probably quantify this by taking this thing and putting a score on each of them and doing a correlation matrix and giving surveys that say, I give you a two and you a three, and you could start to see if everybody rated my trust, you could actually quantify it and start to say, this group has a trust of a three, which is a guardianship, and we want to get to five. What's our plan? Or you can find that these two people don't get along, right? Yeah, there's the Edelman Trust Index. Go ahead. Okay. You know about the Edelman Trust Index? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's a really interesting annual survey, and one of the really interesting revelations is that pharmacists are the most trusted profession above clergymen. <laughs> so those in the pharmaceuticals business have a, have a good flag running. It's by the, the PR from Edelman. Do you find that you need to go through these phases? So, like, you know, that, or is no, it? No, I think it can. I think it can move. I think it's up to the individuals okay. or the group. I, I, you know, how many times does somebody trust? It's like, you know, it's like there's a thin line between love and hate, right? Somebody does something, you go all the way down and start talking bad about them. Do Do you find this really applies to companies doing business together? I mean, absolutely. I'm, like, I'm not really seeing how the, you know... So my company, my former from, yeah. company, really operates, so I'll give you an example, within the company, but even across the country, within the company, when I was dealing with um, the, the field offices, there was a lot of protection. I want to talk to the customer. Why do you want to talk to the customer? What do you, what do you want to talk about? I need to know what you're talking about before you, because I don't want you to mess anything up. So you can start to look at the behaviors and, and see them manifest. In fact, when I, this was very, like, some of the leadership in my old company saw this. And it, actually, the CEO at the time, he, he left in the process of me being there. He really resonated with this, and he actually used to walk around with it because um, he could look at the organization and say, we're not operating here, we're operating here. So it, it, just the fact that, that Robert's dimensionalized this, I think, is very strong. I think it needs a lot more, to your point, meat on how it, it's applied. But to go from what does trust mean to at least... <laughs> a compass of trust to 
individual ways to describe it. And Robert um, just had an article published. I, I have it. If you give me the list, I can forward it. But Robert just had a big article published that gets into all the details on this. So it's pretty cool. So, yeah, go ahead. So when companies deal with each other, one of the ways that they create a lot of <coughs> lack of trust is they give you non-disclosure agreements to, to sign. And I, for the last 30 years, I've changed every single one of them to a mutual non-disclosure agreement. They say, well, what are you talking about? I said, do you think you're the only one who has information that's worth something? I may have 10 times more information that's worth it than you do. So if you want to talk to me, it has to be a mutual non-disclosure agreement or I won't play with you. And I actually don't even like them because the bottom line is, um, you know, I, that was one of the, the most beautiful parts of working at Damon Worldwide. I, they had businesses that still operated on handshakes, with no contracts. I used to be able to do stuff with no contract or like one pagers. It was awesome. It made my ability to get new stuff done. You know, there was some cleanup they started to do because they realized there was a lot of hanging chads out there. But to be free to just operate in a trusting manner to do business and expecting things to work out was pretty powerful. It really